Welcome to A View to a Grill, I'm Johnny. Today, we're going to reverse sear this picanha using the all new Meat Stick 4X. First, let's prepare our picanha. The picanha we have is a choice picanha, a little under two pounds and from my local HEB. Now we can get that out of the package and here it is, that beautiful fat cap that the picanha is known for. And from this angle, you can see that this is not the thickest picanha. It's gonna do well for our smoking. We'll be scoring our fat cap. You're going to need a sharp knife. New West Knife Works knives are 100% made here in the USA. If you'd like one for yourself, check out my link in the description. Once we are done scoring our picanha, it should look something like this. The next thing we're gonna do is salt all surfaces, also known as dry brining and when I was done my picanha looked like this. Just purchased this picanha earlier this morning. Now while that picanha is in the refrigerator it's a good time to clean our grill. We'll take our citrus safe, spray our grill grates. After a minute or so scrub away all of the stuff left over from our last cook. Take a cloth and wipe those grill grates down. Now that our grill is clean we can put together the rub. In a bowl, we're gonna pour in about three tablespoons of kosher salt. Next, about a teaspoon of granulated garlic, then a teaspoon of granulated onion. Then we'll set our man kitchen pepper cannon to a coarse grind. Now we can grind our pepper until you have a tablespoon of freshly coarse ground black pepper. I'll get that in a bowl, mix it up. And when I was done, I had some rub that looked like this. Now it's been about eight hours and we can go ahead and season our picanha. This picanha has been sitting salted in the refrigerator for about eight hours now and this is how it looks. On the fat cap, most of the salt has dissolved and then on the meat side, all of the salt has dissolved. Now it didn't dry out quite like it would have if I had overnight, but eight hours is better than nothing. And now we can season our picanha. I'll start off by seasoning the meat side of the picanha. Next, I'll season all of the edges of the picanha. And notice I'm using my wire rack. That is so that when it's time to put the picanha on, I handle the rack and not the picanha. Now I'll turn the picanha over. I'm just gonna hit it lightly with some olive oil so the rub will stick. And then I'll season the fat cap of the picanha. Now our picanha is seasoned and I'm just gonna let it set there right on the countertop. While our picanha is getting set up on the countertop, I'm gonna go ahead and set up the Weber kettle. Today, I will be using my slow and sear. I have some leftover charcoal from my last cook that I already cleaned. I'll go ahead and start the fire cup and then I'll place a full, small Weber kettle chimney starter on top. We're also going to add a little bit of smoke and that smoke is gonna come from this little piece of oak that I harvested last summer right off of that oak tree. Our charcoal has ashed over and now I'll just get that right into the slow and sear. And that little chunk of wood, we're just gonna throw it right on top. Now we can set up the cook with our meat stick 4X. All we have to do is take the meat stick probe right out of the charger slash extender Fire up the app and once the app finds the meat stick, it'll allow you to choose the cooking method. Next, you'll have to choose the meat type. Since there is no picanha choice, I'm just going to use tenderloin and I want this to be medium rare. Next, the meat stick will create your cook and then it will instruct you to insert the probe completely. Then I'll just insert the probe so that the point will be on the thickest part of the picanha. We've created our cook and now it's time to get the picanha on. Since I have my picanha on a rack, I can now pick the rack up, not worry about whether or not I knock any of the seasoning off of the picanha and set that down on the indirect side of the grill. I'll then close the lid to the Weber kettle and then touch start cooking. I'll then make sure the top vent is wide open, but I'm going to close the bottom vent to the third oval from the left. I waited until I got to about 80 degrees of internal temperature and then turned the picanha 180 degrees and then closed the lid. I'm gonna need more charcoal in order to sear 
the picanha. So I went, got another fire cup, filled another small Weber chimney starter to the top and got that going. I have several videos talking about why you need a long set of tongs. Today I'll be using the Lamson 20 inch premium set of tongs. If you'd like a set of these tongs made in the USA, check out the link below. According to our meat stick 4X, we're up to 100 degrees and it is time to start searing our picanha. And the first thing you notice is that the fat cap is already rendering nicely. Now so we can get the other chimney starter of lit charcoal in, we need to take our picanha off. Now I'll get that out of the way and then pour in our other chimney starter of lit charcoal. We'll be sure to move that charcoal around for even heat distribution and close the door and then wipe up any of the ash that may have gotten onto our grill grates. And then I'll just open the bottom vent all the way. Now, if we're paying attention to what we're doing, we're gonna notice some things as we grill. If you remember 531, when we reached 100 degrees of internal temperature, we pulled the picanha off of the fire. So in six minutes, our picanha went up seven degrees for internal temperature. I'm gonna guess that when I'm done, I'm gonna have at least nine degrees of uh, carryover. Our target temperature is 135. So I'm thinking I need to pull this off at 125, 126, just so that we don't go over our target temperature for doneness. Now let's go ahead and start searing our picanha. I am gonna start this sear on the meat side and let it just sit there for about two minutes. After two minutes, we'll check to see how much sear that got and it needs a lot more. So I'll turn it 90 degrees and then I'll let it sit there for about two and a half minutes. Now we'll start searing the edges. And this is what I'm talking about, why you need a set of long tongs. The rendered fat from the fat cap is really making these flames flare up. Since our tongs are long, our hands are sitting away from the fire, nice and safe. Now that our edges are seared, we're gonna sear the fat cap. And I left this section in real time. We're only given this fat cap a 13 second sear. And that's all it takes to sear the fat cap. Now we'll get that off of the direct heat and move it over to the indirect side of the grill. If you like your picanha rare, then you would take it off right now. I'm going for medium rare. So we're gonna finish this off on the indirect side of the grill. Now remember, I'm gonna give this a nine degree carryover based on what we learned earlier. So at 126 degrees, I'm gonna go ahead and remove it from the grill. Take a look at this picanha. The fat has rendered beautifully. I'll get that onto my tray and indeed long tongs are the way to go. So in just a few minutes, the temperature has already risen two degrees. Now I'll go ahead and shut down my Weber kettle. I'll close the top vent and the bottom vent. Now just take a look at this picanha. That thing is beautiful. Here is another serious question. I need to know what my audience thinks. On the fat cap, the left side is a little darker than the right side. In the comments below, comment, are you a right side person or a left side person? Or are you saying to yourself, Johnny, I think you burnt the whole damn thing. Comment below. Now we're just gonna let this picanha rest. And then finally we get our alert saying that the picanha is ready to eat because we've reached our target temperature of 135 degrees. And then before I can pull the thermometer out, we actually went up to 136 degrees, 10 degrees of carryover temperature, which means I missed my target. It's time to cut this open and check out our results. We're just gonna go for the money shot and cut this right down the center. And check that out, it is edge to edge red. And one of the things I like about adding smoke to this cook is check out this smoke ring. Yeah, you get that on your picanha if you add just a little bit of smoke. Also, look at the fat cap. That fat cap is starting to turn brown. Brown fat is rendered fat. Now today I have to cut my taste test short because I got people in the house waiting to eat. So I'll just cut this little piece off right here on the edge, give it a taste, and holy crap, that thing was so good. It, it just wouldn't come across on film how good that picanha was. 
Now, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that right now. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching A View to a Grill. I'll see you guys next time. Take care, y'all.